everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. This week I am going to be continuing on with my Kirsten meat dress project, which you can see behind me right there on the dress form. I did already start this last week, so if you have not yet seen that video, I will link that down below in the description so that you can go check it out. But this week I'm hoping maybe I can get it finished. Though I have my doubts because I also have rehearsal for four days this week. But what I'm going to be starting with, speaking of rehearsal, is stuff that I can then take to hand sew at rehearsal because Kirsten has a couple of items that are actually hand embroidered. So the first thing that I'm going to be working on is her little pocket bag right here, which I did start a bit of last week. I got these pieces patterned and cut out last week, and I also made the tie piece. So that tie piece is actually fully done. So I have now finally laundered the fabric that is the ivory base fabric, which means that I have something that I can attach this to. The other piece that has hand embroidery is actually her handkerchief because yes, I'm even going so far as to do her handkerchief that goes inside the pocket, either of this pocket, or it can also go into her apron pocket. And I figure, you know, we got to do all of the pieces here, right? So I've actually already ripped the pieces for both of those. I ripped them because they're square or rectangular in this case. So this is going to be the pocket bag piece, which basically gets folded on the bottom. I know I'm not doing a good job of folding this in midair, but it gets folded on the bottom and the top parts kind of get turned in as a hem and the applique part gets put on the front part of the pocket. So this basically takes up pretty much all of the front part of the pocket, just like you can see on that one right there. And then you can see the little bits of hand embroidery that get added, which is the 1854 and the like KL and the little sunbursts. This applique part is actually machine stitch. So I will be doing that part by machine, which is, you know, good. So that is my plan for right now is to go ahead and attach this onto this via machine probably using some tearaway stabilizer in the back just so that those stitches really have something to kind of hold on to. And that way I can then take this to rehearsal and do the 1854 part at rehearsal tonight. I can't do the red embroidery because my Joann's is still out of red embroidery floss because that's not a basic. My Joann's hasn't actually been able to stock their shelves since November but I'm probably going to be taking a foray to the next closest Joann's to see if they've been restocking because they're a bigger location and hopefully have more employees working more hours. The other thing for the handkerchief is that I have cut that out. This is going to wind up being 14 inches square. Right now it's actually 19 inches square because the hem gets turned, it's one and a quarter inches and it gets turned over twice so that it gives some stabilization for that embroidery to go into. And then the red stitches are going to be on the machine. So I'm going to fold those right now and do the red stitching on machine. That way I can start on those blue X's at rehearsal as well. And we'll see how much time I actually have this week tonight at rehearsal. Again, I have it four days this week and we'll see how much of this I actually get done. I would love to finish all of the blue. That would be really, really nice. Maybe even if I finish it today, that'd be even cooler. So anyway, I'm going to get started on the machine sewing portions of these and I will touch base back with you when I start on the next thing, which I think might actually be the bonnet. The machine applique portion is done. You can see all of the little stitches down in there and I have drawn on the part that's going to get embroidered. I kind of gave myself a little grid. I'm hoping that the chalk will erase that is the grid part because I gave myself a line there trying to scale it right and then I'm going to embroider over this part which is like a tailor's wax and then this is just friction pen but the friction pen was not showing up on the red. So I'm going to embroider that tonight or at least the blue portion of that tonight and we'll see how that goes. Now what I want to show you though is a mitered corner. So I noticed that on the little handkerchief we actually do have little folded corners here. They're not actually mitered and mine aren't actually mitered either but they do have that diagonal fold. So that is what I was trying to figure out here without making it really thick because this is really wide. It's folded twice. The corners get super super thick if you don't cut stuff away. So this is the like cutaway that I have come up with here. 
it's kind of almost like a big curve in basically cutting out all of the part that is unnecessary in that fold and then it all folds up this little bit folds in here and that creates our diagonal right there so now I'm going to use this cutaway template to get the other corners cut away and then I can stitch down the red machine stitching on the sides on the edges here and then I can do the blue X's by hand so it has been a few days since I last checked in with you because I've had work and rehearsal every day but at rehearsal I have been able to do some embroidery so let's do a little embroidery check-in and see how things are progressing first off the pocket bag the embroidery is actually done so all of that is all set I don't actually know how to embroider so I made up these stitches I don't know if they're real embroidery stitches basically I did a back stitch the whole time uh, just I don't know how close we can get this that it will focus but if you look closely at the stitches they are literally back stitches and so I just did all of that with back stitches and I also was trying to use really thick floss so I used regular like the kind of embroidery floss that comes in the little like batch like that I don't know what these things are called I used that for the blue because that was what I was able to find in the first place and I did not separate it I know that often with embroidery you wind up separating it you only use like one or two strands of that I used the whole thing because I wanted it thick then I went to go try find red at a different Joann's. They still didn't have any of that kind in red. So I wound up getting a spool and the spool threads are much thinner, but not quite half as thin. Like they're just slightly more than half as thin, which is why I think you can see that my red actually looks a little bit thicker than my blue. And that is because I doubled the red. So I treated it as two strands and I did it together. And so, yeah, that's all I did. I did back stitches for the whole thing except for these which I basically did tiny satin stitches anytime there was a dot and just did like five stitches kind of together creating a satin stitch so yeah that part's done now that said because I'm not an embroiderer and because I was using really thick threads my back is not very nice I have removed the tearaway stabilizer that I was using I did not put this in a hoop I had the tearaway stabilizer that was on there from when I was doing the satin stitch around everything and it seemed like it was firm enough so I just used the tearaway stabilizer because honestly if I have an embroidery hoop I don't know where it is but honestly I don't think I have an embroidery hoop so yeah the tearaway stabilizer seemed to work pretty well so that's good and then I tore it all away but again messy because I noticed while I was doing this particularly when I was working on the sections that were blue with the red stitching I actually could not bury the stitches that went in between things so like for example a stitch that would go between the two points and so that I could do the next little like run up I couldn't bury that within the blue and the backing base material because you could actually still see the red stitch through so that's why you see so many of those connecting stitches on the back and that's why I've decided to line this hers is not lined the embroidery actually does go through to the inside of the pocket she's also not a person she's a doll so that pocket was never really meant to be that functional other than like holding the handkerchief I'm probably going to be actually using mine at comic-con to you know hold things like my camera or whatever so I'm gonna line it to give myself a little bit hardier of a pocket bag as well as cover up all of that embroidery. I'm just gonna cut another piece of this if I have it or else it's just gonna be white muslin that will be on the inside. The handkerchief, I did begin the embroidery but I haven't had a chance to do much of it so that's what's done so far. Those will turn into X's. You can see all of my marked X's everywhere. I eyeballed these. I marked where the center point of each one was and knew that there were going to be four per side and then I just eyeballed them and drew them on. I didn't want to have to measure them all out, especially because I was marking them while I was at rehearsal. And I think they're going to be fine. Like all of this looks really homespun. That's why I went for the thick embroidery floss in the first place. I want it to look very homespun because honestly, even her original pocket looks very homespun, as does the handkerchief. So that's what I was going for as well. Now, all of that said, I don't really feel like actually working on the pocket bag construction at this very moment. I honestly want to work on the bonnet, so I'm going to make a bonnet mock-up. 
So I have this old Simplicity pattern, 3723, with all of these like kitschy, very costumey looks on it. But the bonnet that's on here is actually pretty similar looking to Kirsten's bonnet, which looks like that. So I'm going to try just mocking up that pattern as is and see what it gets to for me. Now, there's a couple of things that I am gonna have to do differently on my bonnet versus her bonnet. One of them that I know I'm gonna do differently is because I couldn't find actual gingham fabric and it's a like gingham print fabric, I am going to need to line this little skirt portion, which actually probably means I'm going to need to line the full bonnet because although hers, is a separate piece. I can see on here that this little tail part is a separate piece. This pattern, it's not a separate piece. It has elastic in there so that it scrunches up the back of the bonnet. So we'll see what the mock-up does. It could be that that does not work at all. The other thing that I'm wondering if I'm going to need to do, now my fabric is fairly stiff, but this is a really big brim and there's nothing in here and there's nothing in the pattern that are used as a stabilizer for that. So I'm kind of wondering if I'm going to need to put some sort of stabilization, whether that is buckram, which I hope not, or whether that is literally just some like fusible stabilizer or something like that. So we'll see, but I kind of feel like that when we scale this up to human form, that the brim like this is not going to be able to hold its shape, even though my fabric has a little bit more stiffness. So I'm going to go ahead and put together that mock-up, but I do want to show you one other thing really quickly as well. So there are three elements to this costume that I have been attempting to purchase. I say attempting to because I still have not found her socks. I think I'm probably going to have to give up on the kind of tannish, yellowish, brownish, stripey socks. They don't seem to exist. I have now spent probably a couple of hours on Google, Amazon, Sock Dreams, like all of the places that I know where I can get socks, trying to find socks like this. I do have a pair that are coming from AliExpress that were a dollar. So I was like, okay, well, there's nothing out if they don't actually get here. They're the closest thing I could find. They won't get here until January 30th, which is long after I first intend to wear this costume since that's actually gonna be next weekend. Um, but it is before Comic-Con. The other option that I might be able to do is there are various socks that are like white gray stripes. And I think that if I were to dye those, tan that they would wind up looking more like hers. However, none of them are actually listed as plus size socks. And although my calves are not enormous, they are definitely larger than like your kind of standard size, especially standard size coming from China type socks. So that's why I kind of don't think those AliExpress ones are going to fit. And I kind of don't think that a standard size knee sock from Amazon is going to fit. So we'll see how that goes because I don't know how to knit. Otherwise, I would probably attempt to make my own socks and crocheted socks are just like not really the thing, which is what I can do. But I have purchased two other items for this costume, one of which has arrived. And that is, I got an amber heart for a necklace. I have not yet put this on a brown ribbon, which is what it's going to be on. I found this on Mercari. The seller actually does have a bunch of them, so I will go ahead and link that seller down below just in case you're looking for them. She was really good too about working with me on sizes because the one that was listed was slightly smaller than I wanted. It was about one inch, and I wanted something closer to one and a quarter, one and a half. So I think this is just over one and a quarter inches, and I asked her if she had a larger size and she said yeah these are all of the sizes that I have you know what would work and I was like yes that that one's gonna work so yeah that is the amber heart it was a pretty good price I think I want to say I paid like around $20 for it which feels like a little bit much for this cosplay but considering I have budgeted so well on everything else like everything else is very inexpensive I don't feel bad spending that on this and it's less than the cost that like you would pay to get one for your Kirsten doll it's actually a pleasant company one now that's it I don't really feel like this is amber it feels very plasticky so I've never felt real amber and it does have like the amber inclusions in there which honestly Kirsten's doesn't but Kirsten's feels a lot more like glass which is kind of how I would assume the real amber is and I think hers is real amber. Anyway this one feels a little more plasticky but 
it looks right so that's the important part and then I think later today maybe I have wooden spoons showing up I couldn't find just like one single wooden spoon about 12 to 13 inches so I have a three pack coming from Amazon don't know what I'm gonna do with those other two spoons but I will have spoons to go with my Kirsten costume and that was what was important anyway I'm gonna go do that bonnet mock-up now Bonnet mock-up! Ta-da! So a couple of things that I did to change the pattern to get what you are seeing here before I even cut it out was that I did actually do a little bit of scale math because, you know, it's me. That's what I do. And I knew that this brim seemed a little bit short. And so I scaled up basically doll sized head measurement as in like around the head versus my size head measurement. And basically my head measurement is actually only 1.78 times the size of one of the American Girl dolls, which I find interesting considering the other scaling things was like 3.88 was the ratio. So yeah, I just multiplied by 1.78 her bonnet to get what I needed. So I increased the bonnet brim by 1.75 inches. And I also increased the little like neck flap part by 1.5 inches. So just so you can see, I stuck Kirsten in her bonnet here. And I think we're looking pretty good. Now, I did not adjust the pattern part of like the call part of the bonnet. This bonnet pattern actually does make up to slightly larger than hers would be. That said, I am going to be wearing a wig for this. I did not measure my head with a wig on. And so frankly, the scale is probably just a little bit different than what I measured since I measured just my own head with my own hair. And it's possible that I may also want to wear this without the wig at some point. So I figured this was kind of a happy medium. And really, I think that it's a good amount of poof. I think it works. I don't think I need to bring it down any. So yeah, I think that I'm happy with how this is. It seems like it works well, even with like this part being attached to the call part as opposed to a separate piece. So I am going to stick with that. And I had, I don't know if you could tell, but I had folded in the seam allowance both up here on the brim and also down here on the neck part of the call. This I just did out of one layer of cotton organdy and it actually seems to be doing pretty all right. I did notice that with the pattern, this piece is meant to be interfaced. So I think I will probably go ahead and use interfacing in there just because I feel like once it's cotton and it's not organdy, that that brim is going to collapse a bit more than I would want. Hers does collapse a little too. I mean, you can see it there. It's not super, you know, firm stuck out or anything like that. But I think the interfacing will help. The only other part that I think this bonnet pattern either, no, I guess it does have, and I just didn't cut out the pieces, are the ties. So I'll be making the ties for that too. And again, I will be double layering all of the pieces so that I get the lining look basically the same. This piece on hers is double layered, but this part is not. So yeah, let's go ahead and cut it out of my gingham print fabric and put together the bonnet for me. So I'm a little bit nervous about doing this with two layers because honestly, this cotton is really really thick and I'm even right now second guessing my idea about this because the other option well there's two other options one would be literally just do kind of a facing piece so that it's just the back of the neck that winds up having the facing the other option is ignore the fact that it has white on the inside and just turn a hem if we look at Kirsten's I mean we can see the surging even which I wouldn't do I would at least turn it twice but you get the red on the inside however However, it is mostly hidden like at the back of the neck it would just be if it like flipped up weirdly oh I don't know maybe I should just do it one layer because this is honestly so thick like if I gather this together this becomes just like very very thick and it's gonna be gathered and you know what yeah never mind I'm I'm gonna scrap this and I was going to tell you how I was going to make this all work with two layers but actually we are gonna scrap the second layer entirely and I'm just gonna turn up some hems here and use a bias tape strip right here for elastic to go into that channel 
So I'm partially following the instructions on this pattern and part of those instructions were to cut this in a little bit further so that this could be turned up. However, it just seems like I've cut it in so far that I'm like way away from where the seam allowance will be over here. Now granted, maybe it's because commercial patterns use 5 8 inch seam allowance and I use half inch. This looks like three quarters to me. I haven't measured it. But in any case, I will have to figure out how to get to this point. I think I'm going to be kind of cutting in like that when I go to attach this to the brim. And here I've laid down a strip of bias tape that is going to be the casing for the elastic. But I'm actually going to put the elastic in last because I'm worried about cinching it up too far. And then I've just turned this in twice. So now I'm going to add gathering stitches all the way along the call here. And that way it can get attached to the brim. By the way, I decided to make these ribbons 27 inches long, which includes one inch worth of seam allowance. That's how long it seemed like I needed to tie it from behind my head into a bow. So there's two of these, they're three inches wide, and I'm going to put these right sides together. So along the long end, plus the little cap, turn them right sides out and press them. And basically that is how I make these ties. So I just wanted to show you guys that I have flatlined my brim pieces here. Honestly, I'm not exactly positive what I used. It's either a super, super lightweight buckram, like the super cheapo stuff from Joann's, or it's actually crinoline, but it was in my drawer and I didn't have any fusible interfacing, so that is what I used. I think it makes a pretty decent, like, stability for it. You can see a little bit of it there. Like, it's not super stiff, but it definitely has some rigidity to it. So now I'm going to put these right sides together, and I'm going to sew around the outside, clip all of those curves and everything, turn them right sides out and then I can connect the call part of the bonnet. I just have to show you how cute this kitten is just completely sleeping on the pile that is my sewing table but like so freaking adorable. But now I have something else to show you too. Oh sorry for waking you up Dora. Stretchy. Oh hey look I have a bonnet kind of. I say kind of because the ties aren't connected to it yet and also I haven't put the elastic in the back so it's very much like falling forward over my head. So I'm going to put some elastic in there and figure out just how long the elastic piece needs to be but the rest of the bonnet looks so cute. I'm loving how it looks right now and I definitely think it's giving major Kirsten vibes. I have the elastic anchored in on one side and then I've just kind of pulled this random piece through the other side just to see, you know, how it would go. I've already tightened it up a little bit, but I think where we're at right now, I think that's actually pretty darn good and will work even when I have the wig on as well. So yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and stitch in the end and then I can sew in the ties kind of where the elastic ends are and then the bonnet will be done. I decided to stitch these parts in by hand because otherwise the stitching would be really, really obvious on the outside. So that means that the bonnet is all done and I think it looks just right like Kirsten's. So super, super excited for this part to be finished. And now I think I'm going to go back to the pocket bag and finish that off. So first off, as you can see here, I did back this by serging with another piece of the cotton. And then let's talk about the folds here. So you can see the pocket bag there as a whole, and it's folded just a little bit underneath where the applique is. And same with this top part is folded just a little bit above that. Then this fold right here in the actual doll one, this edge is just stitched down together, but not through the exterior, because then those stitches would show in the front. I am going to hand sew this shut because I feel like on a human functional pocket, having this not stitched together is going to be an issue, kind of like my cat at this moment. Then this one though, this is stitched all the way through. So I have just folded this over a little bit and I'm going to stitch that by machine all the way through. Then this gets brought back up together and these edges can be basted in place because those are going to be wrapped with our little blue and red at the edge. I am concerned over how am I going to do the fringe? So we will cross that bridge in a moment. Thanks, Dora. So this is incredibly tedious and really there probably is a better way than doing it this way, but basically I am picking out the threads with a pin to try to get them 
you know, separated from the other direction. And once I've got one that I can kind of like grab onto, then I will pinch it and pull it out. But yeah, it is, it's incredibly tedious and I can't do it when my face is this far from the fabric. So that's why you're not seeing me actually pull out anything here. And I've noticed that the blue one, this I actually did on the cross grain and it's actually even harder. And I don't know if that is because the blue fabric itself is thinner and lighter weight than the red, or if it's because it is across the grain. But these threads, the opposite direction that I'm picking out, they are breaking very easily as I go to pick them out. So that's kind of annoying too. And based on scale math, I need 2.75 inches of this and right now I'm already past the point of like where it would be like on here you know if it's doll sized on the red at least and it's just like oh my god I really have to go all the way to here that is gonna take forever so yeah they are seamed together because that way I would know where to stop and it would ideally give me a better like more secure edge so that they wouldn't fall off this way but picking these out that's going to be some while of work. I finally finished unweaving one of these sides. I still have more to go on the other side. But how this gets applied is that it is actually top stitched. Ideally, I'm going to catch both sides as I go because I do have both sides pinned in place. And hopefully that will work out all right. Otherwise, I guess I'll have to add some more stitching in there. And then once we get up here, this just gets stitched top stitched again to itself and then this is going to wind up being folded over so that the waistband part can run through kind of a little loop there and it'll get folded again back there and then stitched in place right here just right across honestly with red thread on a machine because you can actually see that there so I think I'm probably gonna do the same thing on mine the pocket is done how cute is that oh my gosh I absolutely love how it looks all of the chunky embroidery my crazy fringes that took me so freaking long to do Got my spoon peeking out of the pocket there. Haven't finished the embroidery on the handkerchief and honestly that will probably just be an ongoing project that will get finished before Comic-Con. But how cute is that? I absolutely love it. Bonnet up top. See the amber heart and the almost finished apron, but we can't finish the apron until we actually do the bodice. So let's go do a bodice. Okay, so let's talk about the bodice portion of this dress. So looking at the bodice it looks really kind of similar ish different neckline but kind of similar ish to this bodice also no buttons at the front but they're both like gathered into the waist with the wide waistband etc so you would think that I could just use this bodice pattern since I made this you know just last summer except that I was really stupid about this and I used my mock-up as my flat lining without actually making a pattern for it, like copying all of my changes onto paper so that I could have them for later. So I don't get to do that because I made bad choices over the summer. So the moral of the story here is make good choices and when you create your own pattern for something, um, make a copy so that you can use that pattern again because now I'm basically going to have to start from scratch with making this pattern. Yay! Now that said, I think my best bet for starting off is probably still using Simplicity 4551, which was one of the ones that I had used for that other pattern. While I do have like mock-ups in here, that is actually, I think, from when Either I made my Meg dress, my 1860s Meg dress, or it's possibly even from when I did my 1850s sheer dress because I've used this pattern a couple of times. And I am not wearing this with a corset, so there are going to be some changes that I have to make. Also, this does actually have front buttons, which I'm not going to be doing. I'm going to be doing a zipper up the back of this dress, which it just dawned on me. I don't think I have one yet, which means I need to go to Joanne's. Dang it, I knew there was something I was forgetting for this project when I was at Joanne's last week. It's a zipper. 
Now I remember. Helpful. Anyway, I am also going to be making some modifications to this pattern in general. For one thing, this pattern has so, 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 so much ease. I forget how much it is. It's like eight inches or 11 inches or something like that. It's a ridiculous amount of ease. So I don't need that much ease. Um, I'm also ideally going to have the back be slightly more fitted because she does not actually have gathers in the back. I don't know exactly how well that will work, but we'll try. Another thing that I may do, depending on how difficult it is, is that this has shoulder seams that are actually set back. So they kind of start up here and then they go back like down to here. Whereas this dress actually does just have regular plain shoulder seams. So I may try to move those. This also is a very, very dropped shoulder. This is not nearly so dropped. Not only is this a dropped shoulder, but it's a wide set like simplicity shoulder in the first place. So I don't remember exactly how much I had to take it in last time or take it up, but I think it was something around the realm of like five plus inches. Like it's really, really dropped. And then this sleeve is also probably just a little bit more full than what I would want. And I believe this collar is meant to be like a detachable collar that you wear separately. I'm going to build mine in to the dress. So definitely some changes to be made, but I think that this will still be a decent jumping off point. So let me go ahead and take these pattern pieces out and we'll see what all changes actually need to be made. So my plan was to use that pattern that I was talking about to make adjustments to the bodice, but I realized that there's just like so many adjustments that it's not the right thing to start with. So I'm actually thinking of using my 1830s bodice pattern here. Now I think I made this to wear over my like Regency slash 1830s corset, which means that the bust is actually going to be a little bit smaller than my bust just like in a bra. So I will need to adjust that. But I think that otherwise this one actually might be a good jumping off point because the shoulder is pretty much the same. I'm going to have to fill in the neckline so that it's a higher neckline. And then with this front part, I'm actually going to basically just draw the line so that it's straight coming right off from here. And then this is the part that's going to get gathered in at the waist and obviously get rid of the little point on this pattern. And I think I'm going to have to lengthen this a fair amount because an 1830s waistline is a bit of a raised waistline. But I think this is going to be a much closer jumping off point. So this mock-up I think is actually super, super close, which is really good because I totally cobbled together these patterns. I took that 1830s bodice front and made it like a little bit wider around to allow for the bust and a little bit narrower in the shoulders and then filled up the neckline like all the way up to the neck. And then I actually took the back pattern piece from that same pattern that I used for the bonnet and made it have wider shoulders and also made it a little bit narrower because I didn't want to have a dart in the back and that had a dart in the back. And it also was just too big around in the back. So I made it a little bit narrower and I have something here that is almost perfect. So there's a few tweaks that I need to make and I want to tell you about them. For one, the shoulders are still too wide. I need to take in these shoulders even more. I think you can see the pink mark there. So we're going to take it up just a little bit. The pink mark really should be like the, where the seam is. So it's just a tiny bit that needs to come up and same with kind of tapering it out in the back. And then the rest of the tweaks are honestly, I think all in the back. I am half tempted to just add the tiniest bit more width in the front. I feel like it looks really nice up in the neckline. Like this is one of the best fitted like chest areas that I maybe have ever had in a first mock-up. I don't even know how this was possible. But that said, I did kind of want a little bit more gathering down in the bottom. So I'm not sure if I want to maybe like taper it out so that it's basically what this front is when you look at the pattern piece is that it's like a diagonal but then it's cut on the fold. And that's how we get that extra width here. So if I actually swing it out a little bit more and make it even a little bit more diagonal, then I can get more room down here and it would give me just a tiny bit more room in the bust as well, which I wouldn't mind maybe a half an inch more in the bust, just cause right now I feel like we're fitted and I wanted that tiny, tiny bit of extra ease in the bust beyond fitted. And then the back is where it actually has to come both up and in. So the neck, area of the back, the upper back, that has to be tapered in. You can see that I've pinned it a little bit right here and I just need to continue that until where I've got the upper pink mark mid back and that's kind of where my back slopes in. Because this has a back closure, 
that's totally easy to do. And then also it's the right length in the front because I did actually keep the 1830s length here, but it is too long in the back because it wasn't an 1830s pattern that I used for the back. My 1830s back pattern is two pieces and it's shaped kind of like a, a curved princess seam and that was not gonna work. So that other pattern, you can see I've got some marks here. It's the higher mark that it needs to come up to because that waistband goes in. So just a few tweaks to make, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out in the actual actual fabric, making those couple of tweaks, swinging that out just a little bit more on the fold, taking that in, taking this part in and taking the back up. And I think we should be good. And I'm going to cut that out both in the floral blue fabric and then also probably a sateen for a flat lining. I'm going to do a flat lining as opposed to a fitted lining because I just don't think that we need a fitted lining. Like there's not enough gathers to warrant a fitted lining underneath. Cutting it in the same dimension as this is totally fine. So I was definitely thinking about running off to Joann's really quickly for the zipper before it closes because although I do have a zipper that is the right length and the right color, for some reason it's not an invisible zipper and honestly I don't even know why or how I have that one because I only use invisible zippers. To be honest, I don't actually know how to put in a regular zipper and make it look good. Like I've never done a lapped zipper before. And I did look up a tutorial on how I could do it, but I just don't think it's the look that I want. It just looks too obvious when you have a lapped zipper. I prefer an invisible zipper, even though they kind of suck. Like, let's be honest, we all know that invisible zippers are the most prone to breaking of all types of zippers. But in any case, that's what I wanna do and Joanne's closes in about 40 minutes. And so I was like, okay, well, I could rush off to Joanne's, get that invisible zipper, and that way I could potentially finish this tonight. Except that it's 5.30, I need to edit this video as well. And honestly, I am so late in taking down my Christmas tree, I really need to get that done also. And I still have collar, sleeves, cuffs on the sleeves, attaching the bodice to the waistband, attaching the waistband to the skirt, and figuring out why the apron looks a little bit too long on things, at least at this moment, and fixing that and finishing off the apron. And I hate to say it, but I think that's gonna all be a separate video. So let's talk about where I'm at right now with the bodice. We have the bodice, basically. Again, not attached to the waistband, but I've already gathered up the bottom here. It is very much not gonna fit over my sweater at all, and I don't have the zipper to do it up in the back anyway. But there we go, that is the basic <laughs> bodice look over the sweater, and I will finish everything up in next week's video when you will also see the final reveal of the entire Kirsten look. But I'm very proud of everything that I did accomplish this week. I absolutely adore how that spoon bag looks. I think the bonnet is freaking cute. And we got a good chunk of the bodice done as well. So I'm very excited about how things are going. We are almost there and I will finish everything up next week. But if you liked this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube at least once a week with sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and sometimes additional content out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram, that's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below, or you can send me a super thanks or join my YouTube channel memberships right here on YouTube below the video. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Jean, Janelle, and Dan. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!